But first up, there are many reasons why the Palaszczuk government does not deserve to be returned to government on October 31. In many respects, they're a do-nothing government, afraid to make uh, tough decisions around cutting bureaucracy and kick-starting industry, including coal. Run by the left faction of the Labor Party, this is a government that puts ideology before practicality. They'd rather appease the inner city elites and ban tree clearing so that farmers and landholders are susceptible to fire. They'd rather push through a pro-abortion agenda, effectively allowing a woman to abort a baby at 32 weeks, with a letter, of course, from a doctor. They'd rather let a black-throated finch stop a mining project and then spectacularly reverse the decision when Bill Shorten lost. They've allowed several senior cabinet ministers, including former treasurer Jackie Trad, to remain in cabinet despite integrity scandals. Trad fell on her sword and exited cabinet after the unions told her it was all over. That gives you an indication of how much power the unions have. These are the same unions that demand EBAs that send the cost of a project up by 30%. The worst performing state economically, no plan to address the ballooning $90 billion debt. Need I go on? The LNP should shoo this uh, election in, but the polls are 50-50, which is, to me, incredible. However, there's one issue that will seal Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk's fate without question if she continues to defer to her Chief Medical Officer, Jeanette Young, on opening the borders. If the borders are not open until September, as she indicated in the last 24 hours, this will be an electoral bloodbath for Labor. Now, the Deputy Chief Medical Officer, Paul Kelly, says there is no legitimate reason to keep the borders closed. New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian has implored Premiers in Queensland, WA and South Australia to open their borders. Of course the risk of infection is there. It's always going to be there. But we flatten the curve and the outlook looks strong. The economic impact of keeping the borders closed far outweighs the health narrative right now. It didn't two, three weeks, two or three months ago. Of course it didn't. But right now it does. And the tourism operators in every state in Australia are desperate for some sort of political sunshine. They need cashed up people, uh, particularly in North Queensland, southerners travelling up here in winter to escape the southern cold. It's a bonanza they need more than ever. It's a tourism and economic windfall that is not only uh, craved, but is common sense. And depriving the tourism industry of a much needed boost in all states and territories during winter and beyond is madness. Now the art of politics is making the impossible possible. And to me, this is a no brainer. It's an easy decision, not one that should tie premiers up in knots. If Anastasia Palaszczuk digs in on this and keeps the borders closed until September, she will put the icing on the mediocrity cake and lose handsomely come October 31.